enough time for some mailbag. I've currently gone back to my phone camera until I get my mount sorted out for my main camera just sitting right there right now. So that's my new one which I'm going to try and get working. I need a proper mount for which can take the weight and that sort of stuff. And see, I've been playing around with mounts. And I'll get there. Anyway, so I'm back to my phone camera for the time being with the plug-in microphone. So let's see how we go. I'm going to be upgrading the system. But don't worry. What the hell is this thing? It's a swivel mount. Okay. So complete swivels around. Our tights. Swivel head. Uh, it's got a threaded part here, though. Don't know how good that's going to be. It looks fairly thin. No, it's not too bad actually. It's probably about six mil or something thick. So okay. So this is options I was looking at for mounting that camera or anything else I happen to be using. So now I've got this pivoting head, which is this nice little screw on the side there. So I can just pivot it around and make it do whatever angle I want. Um, see the threaded section there stays in place. So um, until you lock it, I think, and then it'll yeah, that's fine. So. Um, this is one of the options I've got for mountings. Um, so I really need to get that camera mounted up here. I'm waiting for some quick connects to turn up. They've been sitting in Auckland Airport for the past two weeks. Two weeks. Now they were coming to the country and for some reason they've been sitting in Auckland Airport waiting for customs export clearance. Now it came into the country which is imported. All right, for some reason they got sent to the export area. They've been sitting there for two weeks. So a week ago I contacted New Zealand Post and told them, hey, this isn't right. And they looked at it and said, yeah, you're right, this isn't right. Anyway, so it's now been released from the Auckland airport. But now for the past day and a half, it's, yep, the state hasn't changed. It says it's being sent to local depot, but it hasn't changed in a day and a half. So they probably lost it again already. Bloody useless. Anyway, so it's, I'm waiting for those things. So what's this? This arrived, but I didn't actually... Um, I don't know what this is. <laughs> I've got a cat missing out of the box, but um, so this thing here's arrived. But uh, I'm at a loss to what it actually is. I've got no idea. Um, I don't remember ordering this. It's version 3.6, whatever it is. Hold on. Ah, I know what this is. Wow, okay. Um, this isn't what I was expecting. Hmm. I recognise this now. This, and along with that, is the inside of the FX951 handle. Thing is, I ordered the whole handle, not just the not just the circuit board that goes inside it. So they're going to get bad feedback on that. I didn't want this just that bit. So this is just the connection part. There we go. So it looks it looks, it looks reasonable. Got two tabs there for the ground. One for that side, one that side for those two rings. Um, and it's got. Got a diode and thermistor in there. Because that's a thermistor, I'm not sure what it is in there. It might be. I don't know what it is. I've got no idea what that is. Anyway, something. It's probably a. Oh, it'd be a uh, tipping sensor, wouldn't it? Because it's got uh, motion detection, is it? Might be for that. So, so, there you go. 907 to T12. So, this. I'll just tip it over now, don't I? Oh, God. How stuffed it. So I think, yeah, actually, no, did I buy the handle or did I just buy this piece? I might have bought this piece as a new idea of pulling this thing apart, replacing the guts of it with this one. Get rid of the horrible plastic thing that's in there, put this in it, in order to make this handle decent. That could be what I was going to do. Let's have a quick look at that, shall we? Pull that tire. Might one out. 
and we've got to kind of unscrew that piece, that's right, that unscrews. So that should fit in there, somehow or something. Will it? It's not looking promising actually. Not for that to locate. No, nah, it's a different handle. Hmm. It's not going to fit in that handle. Hmm. Okay. Um, I do have another solution. I will just have to think about that. I've got this other handle here, which I've got, which I've used a little bit. Um, I don't know. Is it fitting that one? It won't even fit in that one either. I need the rest of the handle to go with it. I'm pretty sure I did the whole thing. But that is much nicer than the other thing. So, um, let's see how we go. I, might, I could 3D print one, I suppose. I suppose I could 3D print a new handle. Maybe nick the rubber grip off this one. Maybe? I don't know. Let's see, because this handle is rubbish. Uh, but if you, play, if you fix the handle, I think the iron will be alright. The only issue I've had with it really is the iron. The body's been okay. It's cut a little minor manufacturing faults, so nothing too bad. But the hand piece is absolute crap. This will be okay if this is inside a housing and keeps it aligned nice and straight. That would be absolutely fine. Yeah, okay. This is a project for later on. But okay, now at least I know what it is. Let's see what's in here. Motor stepper drivers. Ah, now my 3D printer, um, the board it came with is faulty. The um, E drive doesn't work. The, the stepper just doesn't go. I don't know what is going on to it, but this doesn't work. Now I found out after I pulled the heatsink off it what the parts were. What was that? Really? Um, what the hell is this thing? Never seen one of these before. Interesting. Moisture. Sensing with a gel bag. Really? That's really interesting. Um, so we've got some parts here which are a, um, what was it, 4988, I think it was, a 4988, which I'm trying to read it myself, I can't show them to you, you guys got four of them in there, um, so these are the drivers for the stepper motor, so I thought right, I'll buy some more, well these look smaller. Hope they're the right package. That'd be annoying. So, Banggood's actually sending me a replacement drive, um, a replacement controller board. Um, I contacted him and said, hey, look, it's got an issue, this isn't driving, and uh, they're sending me a replacement. Um, but I'm hoping I can repair the original one and um, get the thing back up and running again. So I have a spare board as well, but there's no guarantees I can fix it. We'll see if we go. But the drive is definitely not working. Signal's going to the drive. I should have recorded it actually, but signal's going into the drive, but the drive's not putting anything out, so definitely driving. So, a couple more parts here 740LS74 and 740LS08. Again, these are things I've, I listed on the um, parts list for the HP 4261A, things which I thought I might need. So, no, I'm just stocking up again, so uh, sometimes you need them, sometimes you don't. Let's do this one, get this one out of the way. It's looking slightly crinkled, even though it says please do not bend. It looks like it's not been treated perfectly well. Um, so, anyway, it's probably okay. 
Right, so this is the uh, Fluke 893A service manual. Uh, this is for the, I did get the 931A um, in preparation for getting the unit and when the unit turned up it was actually the wrong unit. They sent me an 893A instead, which is similar but not the same. So um, I had to buy another manual. But anyway, um, the person that sent me the unit incorrectly has given me a, a partial refund, which was absolutely fine. I was happy with that. Um, you know, I've still got the unit, which will work hopefully, do what I want. And um, no, I just had to pay a bit more for an extra manual or stuff like that, but that's okay. All right. I don't know what's in this yet. Just trying to figure out for the it's polystyrene boxing. So it's probably a, a lid. Looks like it's a lid. Feels like it's a lid. There's a lid. That. And what the hell is this? Oh yes. Here's a little more interesting. Um, I thought I'd get these and see what they're like. There's a reference ball, so well, I don't know. This is a capacitor ball, so you can dial up whatever capacitance value you want. Um, one NF through to 1999 NF, and one NF steps. So, but I'll get again see, you know, see how good they are. Um, I've got a different type there as well. Uh, I mean, it's a close look. I mean, there's a little bit of flux residue on there that I'll probably need cleaning off. I slightly missed that one. I've done. The rest of it looks like it's been cleaned. Just, I slightly just missed that bit. Um, so, yeah, well. Let's have a look now, shall we? Shall we fire this up and see if I can get some readings off it, which makes sense. Um, what are those? Are just plugs, are they? Just plugs. What should I use for this? Hmm. Let me just think about this. I'll be back in a second. All right, so I've got my LCI meter down here. Let's hook this thing up, and we'll see what we get out of it. Um, I'm going to hook this. I suppose I'll hook it onto the back like that, couldn't I? That should be fine. If I can get them to stay on, it'll be good. On there. Ah, oh, come on, stay on there. That's not going to cooperate, is it? No, the board's sitting on them. Alright, let's do it this way then. These little tabs here, I was trying to get there. And we'll see what we get. So, you want uh, capacitance? Power all capacitance should be fine. There's some stray stuff. Um, a relative measurement, shall we? On something. We well, never use relative measurements normally. No. Anyway, right, let's try fucking some meters in. One NF. Yep, okay. Let's do 10 NF. Yep, okay. Take that one back off. Slightly out there, isn't it? So let's just try a different one. I don't know what the accuracy is like on these capacitors. Give it 10.1. Yeah, I think the values are slightly out of capacitors. It's not like a truly good reference. It's just for switching in capacitance values. If you're trying to do some testing on a bit of circuitry and you want some values shoved in. I mean, these are 100 and let's give them 97. Well, let's try a change of frequency, shall we? See if it matters much if it will let me change the frequency. Why don't it let me change the frequency? Okay. I don't know what it's doing. Let's start again. Should be able to change the frequency when I'm measuring capacitance. Let's just do a lower frequency. Yeah, let's do 120 hertz. All right, for this argument's sake, let's do some tests again. So it's giving 98 in there for right now. Hmm. Switch to 100 says maybe it's just some parasitic stuff. Maybe try a thousand. Yeah, in fact, I'll see the tolerances on these capacitors. Are what's oh, I've got my 100 still switched in. That'd be why. Um, do 10 again. 
So 10.2, it's very similar to what I've got before. 1054, yeah, okay. 98, net one. And one. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this, this. That one's closer. But there's also some variation there in the um, values of the caps, as you'd expect. Tolerance is a little bit different. But it's your eyes, little test ball. You know, if you want to uh, shove a bit of capacitance across something to see how it's going to react, I mean, you can plug that in and use it. That's what I've got it for. It's not really a great reference ball. You can't really use it as a reference capacitor, true, unless you know exactly what the values are. And that does down. So this one. This is a similar unit. This one's an inductance unit. So let's just go. Yeah, inductance mode. Let's see what we're going here. So you have to jump in the one you want. Okay. Let's see what we go with this. So it's currently got 1,000 selected, and it's 984. So let's take that off. Overload, okay, let's just do one. It gives me two. Yeah, well, it's probably a bit of lead and stuff like that. Let's go 6.8. I'll get five. <laughs> yeah, there's a bit of variation there, isn't there? Okay, let's do 33. 32. Mm -hmm. yeah, let's do 180. 175, 178. Yeah. Uh, does that make much difference? Not in a favourable way. Yeah. Let's try one kilo, let's see if that does much. One again. Point two. So yeah, the frequency is already changing it because it's reactive. But that's okay. Trying to see if I can determine what frequency would give me an accurate reading. Area zero. That's helpful. What battery going flat? I have to wonder now. Yeah. Um, It's way off and has low frequencies. Way off. So one kilohertz seems to be close. Ten kilohertz is closer, so we'll go with that. Let's do uh, four seventy. Yeah, I mean it's okay. I mean, if you just want to shove something in there to see what's going to happen. I mean, you can do that. But these were fairly cheap. I thought I'd get a couple and see how we go. Um, you know, you might, can you use them as references? Um, maybe if you do a transfer standard kind of setup, but you know, really sort of a curiosity. Um, I got these to play around with for the um, LCR meter, the HP 4261A. I thought I'd hook them up to that and just see what happens and see if it correlates at all with those. So that's still going to be a possibility to something to check. Thanks to my Patreon supporters and people that have donated to me via PayPal. It's much appreciated. Don't me to buy little things like this, little gadgets and things to play around with. And, um, or parts for things I'm repairing. It's much appreciated having that kind of support. And I uh, hope you enjoyed my bag. I try and, I'm actually getting worried about the, the my bag content. People seem to be getting a bit bored with them. Maybe my format's wrong. Please give me some feedback below about what you'd like to see in the my bags. Um, do you want more detail, you know, like trying to go into full th testing and comparisons and things like that on things like this, or obviously opening mail about things like this arriving, that's pretty boring, I understand that. But I'm sure there's things which maybe I could probably expand upon a bit further. So give us some feedback on what you want to see and we'll see if I can make it a bit more interesting and keep things um, a bit more, I don't know, justifiable. You know, I, I, the mailbags 
sometimes I think, well, that mailbag video is not very good. And I, I actually think about maybe just not in publishing. I need some footage I've actually just completely deleted. I've done a video, looked at it afterwards, and gone, this isn't worth publishing. I just deleted it. You know, so it does happen. Um, sometimes it's not the best. Let's ignore my cat. All right, let's see what I've got in this mailbag here. So I just want to say thanks to my Patreon supporters and anyone who's donated to me via PayPal. That's much appreciated. Um, I'd like to get some more Patreon supporters if anyone's interested. You know, a dollar a month even, you know, two dollars a month, whatever. It's fine. You don't have to give a lot. It just helps me out a little bit. It takes a lot of time and a lot of money to build these videos. So I'd appreciate some support from that. If anyone's, you know, feeling generous. This looks interesting. Let's have a look at this. I think this is come on, flip them. I'm gonna look for it. Obviously, it's a T12 type uh, system, T12 iron with some bits. A bit. Well, this is a handle. This is an aluminium one. Um, a little bit different. Hey, it's come, it comes with a little holder, a little stand this time. It's great. So, this is an aluminium handle. Now, I got this to replace the one which is already on that fake Heiko. I've got the FX951. So the theory is, obviously I've got to make it myself. Um, it wasn't quite what I was expecting, had to build it, but uh, that's okay. Here it is, aluminium handle. There's the insert which is screwed in. Cool, we get to check out how good it is. Uh, let's grab a Things falling everywhere. Oh man, the ends fell off that one. I saw them replace it, it's not very good. So that's going to sit in there. This it seems okay, I suppose. It's nothing fantastic, but I think it's right. Assuming it lines up, of course, I can't really tell. Trying to see. Can you see in there? Can't quite see in there. Anyway, it's probably fine. So um, it certainly feels a lot better than one which isn't there, the handle. So it's looking promising. Um, it's how does that go? Is that shut? No. That way. No, I'll take it off first. So also I've got to solder the wires onto that and what have you. But it's got the motion sensor, which is just a mercury tilt switch. And it's a mister there by looks of it. I guess that's what that is. Um, it's got this little mini plug, which isn't what I wanted. It's, anyway, it's got a thin plug thing on there right now. So what I'll probably do anyway is just throw that one away and not worry about it. Um, I don't know. What's your opinion on this thing? This certainly seems nicer. Um, does the ground touch the outside of this? It doesn't, does it? Or does it? it may do. I mean, it's sitting there, but... No, that's not touching the outside. So the handle itself isn't grounded. That may be a good thing, I'm not sure. 
normally they're insulated anyway so it's probably not an issue is it probably just concerning myself too much with that this is um, I guess as a handle goes over that bit I'll just slide it on now those are my kind of on in here the Acme back me yeah okay all right yeah that's fine that already feels a lot better than the original um yeah so also i'm gonna have to build this up and do stuff why this plug is so different to the original i mean i don't know is the original plug that small this is like a mini mini one it's like half the size of normal um very surprising uh, anyway i'll figure that out so i build that up and i'll try it on the iron to see how it goes um obviously i've got a tip with it as well uh, the cable to come with, I suppose you could cover that, shouldn't we? Um, yeah, that's a nice silicon, that's nice. Um, it's not very well extruded, but uh, it's a nice silicon, see, it's really offset there. Yeah, try and get it focused on it as well. See how well offset that is in the centre there? It's not in the centre, it's off to one side. Not great this quality, but it's a nice flexible silicon, so I think that's okay. I think it'd be fine. It's just we be fussy about extrusion. That end looks a lot better, so maybe it's just that end there. Maybe it's just wandering a little bit when no extruding. But anyway, so it comes with a nice cable. So, little thing to play around with. Let's put this other tip back on the other iron, which. So this is what it's replacing is this. Crappy arrangement. Yeah, this crappy arrangement was supposed to replace <sighs> this crappy arrangement, um, which has got really bad connections inside there. And this handle itself is okay, it's just it's huge, it's, it's actually too big, it doesn't need to be that big, it could be short, it could be down there, you know. Um, and the connections inside are just not very good so I'm just trying different handles to see if I can get one which actually does a job so far I've not much luck but this other one looks quite promising that aluminium one looks pretty good right let's see what the next thing is let's do this one first what earth is this Ah, okay. Awesome. Awesome. Now, I'm going to try these out too. I'll show you these. Little strip lights. LED lights. Now, I've got these on motorhome. So, oh, double-sided tape. <laughs> Even better. I'm not going to be using that, so I'm going to put that to one side. So, these are supposed to run up to 24 volts in brightly. Oh, that's a good point. I'm going to have to go and look at that up. Code doesn't hint at. I don't know, it's got two four there. I don't know, but that could be anything. Other one there. So, a pair of these because I want. I've got two. Lights. I've already got one light in place in the motorhome. And it's a nice looking light, but I want to try and find another one exactly the same. I couldn't find one. I bought it at a uh, motorhome show about three or four years ago, and at the time they only had one. I wanted to buy it too, but they only had one there, and I was going to buy another one. But fortunately, I can't remember the company I, came, I got it from. Oh, this is interesting. This bloody mount system. Hmm, that could be a bit of a hindrance. We'll have to figure that out. Um, can't remember either the company I got it from or be able to find anything that looks like it at all online. So it's a really nice light and it works really well. It doesn't use much power. So I thought, well, in that case, I'll get two more lights and I'll replace one which is already there. And I'll put another set. I've got two of the same on the same section within the motorhome. And I think there's supposed to be 24 volt lights. I don't remember. Um, let's power one up and see what happens. Well, I'll power them both up and see what happens. Make sure they both work.
Let's quickly do that. Yeah, so uh, let's see how we go with this. They weren't that expensive, I think. I think. Oh, how much were they? I think they're only about five dollars each or eight dollars each or something like that. They weren't that expensive, which is what you want. Um, let's get a cable for this somehow. Hold on. Grab something. This will do. Oh, perfect, this will do. Uh, that's my 11 volts channel 2. So I've got a whole bunch of rubbish on my desk which I need to sort out. It's way too crowded in here. Alright, so this is counting on 11 volts. And it's turning up on that hole, so help. Okay, yep. Okay, 11 volts. How much counts are drawing? 160 milliamps, that's alright. Right, let's give the uh, up a bit higher. Yeah, uh, channel two, I want. Let's just go 14 volts. It's 250 milliamps. Okay. I'm going to need to check the, the listing to see if it can actually do 24. I think I would have bought most 24 volt lights, but I'm not sure. You know, pretty. Look at that swamping the bloody camera out. Yeah, but yeah, is that one works at least? Let's check that one out. So, 14 volts. This one doesn't work. Oh, you're kidding me. Ah, there's a switch on there. Yeah, that'd be why. Ah, look at that. <laughs> Panic over. This is doing 260 milliamps as well, so um any yeah, these in there. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty, thirty-two, thirty-four, thirty-five, seventy LEDs. Uh what configuration are they in? I can just see traces there. Right, it's in lots of three. So there's lots of three in parallel. It can't be 35 then, can it? Oh, no, it's two under there. It's 36, two more underneath the in cover down there. Which aren't even. Oh, that's in the wrong place. It's slid. It should be that way a little bit, like that. <laughs> hmm. That's not going to be at all, annoying at all. Driving down the road. I need to fix that. Which means that it's actually got very little heat sinking onto the frame because it's obviously a loose fit. That might require some tweaking. Stick some thermal, take it out and stick some thermal compound under. Um, at least it's glued on, I wonder. Hope I don't break it. I'm trying to find out. It's wobbling. I think that will pop off. Let's get a little screwdriver. Let's just see what's going to happen here. Hopefully, it will pop off. There we go. So, 72 of these. Come on, if you can. Go on. It's really solidly on that bit. Why is that bit coming off? Ah, oh, there's screws under there. Ah, there's screws in the end. Obviously, that one wasn't in the very well in the first place. Let's get a screwdriver. Uh -huh. Should have guessed those screws. That's dumb. Anyway. Guess it wasn't screwed all the way in. Now it comes off of beautifully. Look at that. And just slide straight out. Okay. So yeah, no heat sink compound at all. It's just gonna sit there roughly and kind of conduct something. So that'll need some work to make that better. Um, you could probably even use that for something else, couldn't you? So obviously a little driver under here. 
um, of some kind. I can see an inductor in this is probably a step up actually, it's probably a step up converter. Let's measure it. Let's measure it. Um, I need some different leads. Hold on. Sending crocodile clips on. Cause I'm here somewhere. Oh, here we go. Leads crocodile clips instead. That's what we need. Sorry, I'm messing around. I should probably stop recording, but yeah, I can't bother. Okay. Also, in a bit of a rush. Got a lot to get done. So we shall measure the voltage on this. Drop this voltage down on the power supply a little bit. And we'll see how this goes. Got my meter over here. Oh, it's blinding the bloody camera, isn't it? It's no good. Anyway, um, no, I need like so I need to measure it. Sorry, you have to live with the swamping for a second. So I've got a meter over there, and this is. I'm probing back front, but who cares? That's currently eight volts. Interesting, stepping down a little bit. Okay, let's get fourteen. That's nine volts. Shall I just go a bit higher? That's down nineteen volts. It's still nine volts. So okay, so it is regulating at nine volts. Current is only 160 milliamps at that voltage. And it's going down. But it seems the optimum brightness is about 13 volts. When you go above that, it starts dipping down. So yeah, I think it will run up 24 volts, okay. Because it's obviously just stepping that down on the current limiting. So 14 volts there is 9.1 volts going into the LEDs and 280 milliamps. So I'm not quite sure which supply I'm running off um, in the bus, whether it's a um, whether it's a 12 volt supply, or 24 volt supply. I really don't remember. But um, so this this LED chip runs at 9 volts. So it's probably 3 volts per LED. Let's try and see how these are sectioned up. I can't see anything there. All right, okay, now I can see it. Now I can see it. All right. So I'll pull this off it. So I'm going to do some work on these lights just to improve the thermal properties of them, just to make, protect them a little bit. If I can get it in the light, you might be able to see it. Now, if I can find one for a start, there. Right, so you can see the traces there. There's a trace right there. It's joining us three in here. It joins up in that top left corner and on the bottom right corner. So those so that sec, set of six is three in series in parallel with each other across that supply. So that's three volts per LED. Is that much for these you reckon? Three volts? Hmm, dunno, maybe. I've been pushing a little bit. I don't know if there's any adjustments inside that little converter there. It'd be nice to be able to turn it down a little bit. But yeah, a little switch on the end there. Hmm, seems alright, doesn't it, I suppose. Very simple, very basic, but hey, if it works, it works. Um, quality, yeah, you know, it's just that's polypropylene, that's okay, it's pretty good stuff. Um, Board itself looks nice. Soldering, yeah, it's okay. No, right, this is 11 minutes of waffle about an LED strip. This is ridiculous. Okay, I'm gonna stop doing this one. Right, last thing. Let's see what's in here. Well, this last thing for this bit of video I'm doing. There's probably gonna be other things before. Oh, I don't know. Oops. Now this package I've been waiting for, it's been in the country now for three weeks. Not an hour away from my house. <laughs> a 
about an hour's drive away. It's been three, taking three weeks to get here. It's sat in the Auckland Airport. It got missorted and it's sat there in the export section, ready for export, waiting clearance for export. And it's just, what the hell are you doing? You know? And um, I ended up having to get an old NZ post yet again for like, I think it's like a weekly occurrence now, and they phone up NZ post and complain about stuff not turning up. And they managed to sort it out and got it here. Um, that's, I don't know, that took a week from the time I contacted them. It's now Friday. I contacted them last Friday. And it took a week from that time for them to get, find it, get it sorted out, and get it on its way. So at least it, got, it arrived, you know. It doesn't get lost, it's got delayed. So, you know, I don't, I don't think I actually had anything get lost. Well, maybe one or two things, but minor things. Um, you know, I'm waffling again. Right, so let's see what these are. Camera mounts. Now, this is very much like one which. Um, Does that work? Oh, cool. Um, who was that? Voltlog. Voltlog just did one of these the other day. Um, exactly the same mount, but looks of it looks identical. And um, how's that work? Something like that. Interesting. Is it? Yeah, that's it. So um, he, he got the same mounts for his camera, um, and I got a bunch of these. I've still got three of them because I've got a mount here for this camera. I've got my phone right now. I'm currently recording my phone um, because I've got to make a bracket up for my new camera. Also, I want to put this on my tripod, so I've got the same mounts on here on my tripod and anything else I may. I've got one spare one basically. I may need another mount. But I wanted to make sure I use the same ones. And having this little lever thing is interesting. This little locking lever, so you can. So you're accidentally releasing it, that's quite good. Um, so, sprung, spring action, is it? How does that work? That kind of... It's locked in place. Oh, okay. If you take the print... If, oh, okay. right. if you take the pressure off that, it'll pop straight back down, no problem at all. If it's got any tension on it, it, won't, it doesn't want to pop that down. So if you want to... I think uh, Voltlog had issues with his one not going back down. Um, I didn't watch that bit properly, actually, probably shouldn't have done, but put the back slide, take the pressure off that, and just goes straight down, no issue. That's absolutely fine. Just got to take the, the sideways tension off it. Um, so that's okay, that's easy. So put that back in there, pull it back a little bit, push it down. Hopefully, get it lined up. Should go that down, because oh, I'm pushing it that way. Mm, so it looks like they've got a tolerancing issue on these mounts. Um, the mount itself is okay, it's a little locking pin, I'll put that back in place. So that feels nice and solid, it feels good. It does feel like a nice, a solid aluminium. It does feel like a nice mount, it does feel good. Um, but obviously there's a tolerance issue on that pin, where these I believe are a copy of an original one by, uh, I've forgotten who now. Someone did mention it on Voltlog's channel, but um, this pin here is obviously a bit sloppy in that hole, and it's binding up very slightly. As it's used, it'll probably get better anyway. It'll probably loosen itself up. But when you have something which is a little bit sloppy, and you've got hard edges, like 90 degree angles on them at the bottom of the pin, so it might be 90 degrees at the bottom like it's at the top, right? So if that twists at all in any direction, it'll just bind up. See, that's released now. And it's binding, so it's twisting over and locking. But if you push it more to the centre, it goes straight down. All right, that's just purely a manufacturing thing. Um, if I take this lever off, I can probably pop that right out. And if I um, probably the way to fix that is to take that pin right out and get some sandpaper and just polish around the very edge. To radius it very slightly on the bottom, on the inside edge of that where the spring is, um, that'll probably stop it binding. Should I have a look? I might have an anchor here I can use. Maybe. Maybe I don't. Uh, no, I don't. Um, so I might look at that. Maybe I'll do that as a little follow up or something. So you let you know how it goes. Maybe I'll mention it in a video later on. So, yeah. 
take the pressure off and it goes in that's fine and lock it I like that mount that's nice um, that little pin is a small aggravation but I believe that's fixable and I think that's a really big deal it's purely a tolerance thing in manufacturing um, not a big deal as I said it's not a big deal not a big deal probably not a big deal yeah. so that's good I've got the mount sorted out so I can actually start making the mount for my new camera which is great I've been waiting for those to turn around which has been a bit frustrating because it's taken three weeks next thing is a new camera uh, microphone another one now I thought I'd just try this one out as well um, it's another Boya BYV M190 there'll be links to these things um, down below as well in my in the description for both the mounts and um, and this mount here and the lights and stuff like that. I think I think the lights anyway I'm not sure yeah probably will be but the Banggood ones um, those are affiliate links so I get get credit onto my account with Banggood if you buy those buy anything from the site after throwing those links in so so it's got a stereo um, 3.5 mil jack on there it takes a battery does it take 9 volt battery takes in there um, which is amplified microphone obviously you got uh, levels here uh, off on and off I don't know what that symbol supposed to mean but electrically that's an off symbol open switch anyway um, let's go rubber mountings which is a nice touch shock mountings uh, and I suppose I could slide this off shouldn't I and have a look under there there we go no shotgun mic so this was really cheap and I thought I think I saw a review on it by someone and um, I thought well, I'll give that a go but obviously it's not a that's not a um, iPhone mount but that should work on my camera that's the plan um, so I can't use it on this phone but I should use it on my new camera and you carry bag thing for it I suppose it might be handy um, and spare mounts spare rubber mounts that's nice although they're basically just o-rings anyway but yeah you can always find them but, uh, no, it's okay. it's, it's felt like it's splitting but it's not it's just the way it's got a bit of dust on there so from the packaging but yeah it looks that's pretty good um, got a fluffy well, dead cat would it dead cat is what you call it isn't it um, so wind mic you also got this one here would you use both at once I wonder I don't know it seems to allow for it I don't know maybe you change it I, I might change it um, that's very loose so yeah I think that's allowed for basically using this one inside it we've got cat here on there how do I do that oh it's so the um, it's on this thing it's from the dead cat there we go <laughs> alright so cool. So we'll see where that goes. Once I get my new camera set up going, I'll I'll plug this into it and see what this is like. Um, another toy to play with. Now I've got a couple of microphones to try out now. So obviously I obviously did the other shotgun mic I did before as a review, and um, now I've got this one. This is more likely to be the one I end up using. Um, but we'll see how we go. Being a powered microphone, it's going to be louder. You know, amplification and stuff on it which is what I'm looking at is having an amplified microphone so it's nice and loud the other one I tried out was a um, dynamic microphone basically and being unpowered meant it was not uh, as loud and that's not what we want right that's waffling about that too now um, so we're done I think Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, click the bell icon so you get notifications about videos. And um, again, thanks to my Patreon supporters, thanks to people that donated via PayPal. Um, I do appreciate that kind of support and I um, hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to tell your friends, spread it around a little bit or whatever. Um, post videos, comment below, give me feedback, good or bad, whatever. I prefer good, bad makes me miserable. Good's good. <laughs> But no, I want, I want fair feedback, you know. If, you think, if there's something you see me doing and you think I could do it better, please do comment. That's fine. I don't mind that. Um, but I don't like negative comments, you know. Negative comments, just I find it a bit miserable, you know. Um, but 
constructive criticism is absolutely fine. You know, everybody has to learn by doing things differently after hearing what they're doing wrong. So thanks for watching and catch you later. Bye.